Hi friends, today we're doing the mystery box challenge. Hi friends, I'm Auntie Cuckoo. Welcome to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Val, aka Auntie Cuckoo, and here I love all things home decor from window shopping to hauls, decorating, and DIYs. And today I am participating in the mystery box challenge. And this was created by Courtney, whose channel will be linked in the description. It is creative on the cheap. We become friends over on Instagram, and she invited me to take part in this challenge. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared. So if you're not familiar with the mystery box challenge, it's basically a group of creative people on YouTube who get together, send each other a box and come up with some DIYs based on what's in the box. So Courtney created this, I think it's about five years. It goes about every other month. And I was so excited and nervous when she invited me to be a part of it. So you send a box to someone, you receive a box from someone else. Courtney puts it all together. So I received my box from Courtney, who's creative on the cheap, and she's the one who created the mystery box challenge. And I sent my box to Yami, who is the Latina next door. Love both of these ladies. I'll have their channels linked down below in the description with the entire playlist. And it is really fun to kind of see what everyone sent each other and what everyone came up with. Here is the thing with the mystery box challenge, you're gonna get a box and each box has a theme. So the theme this time around is dollar store. So you can shop at places like Dollar Tree, Dollar General, the 99 cent store, places like that. You box everything up and send them to the person that Courtney's given you to. So with dollar stores being the theme, there's also a twist. And this time around, it is material based. So I have not seen what materials I'm going to be allowed to use. So let me go ahead and open up this email and see with you all what my twists are. So I am to use the color green, the material wood, and embellishment of beads. The beads scares me. The green and wood, I love. So thank you, Courtney. I'm not as scared about the twist as I thought. So I have my box right here. We're gonna open it up together. It has been sitting here for 24 hours and literally just now I slid it open so I can share it with you guys. No clue what we're getting into. There are two items in the box that you have to use. Those are your mystery items and you have to incorporate those. So let's get into this together. First off, I, ooh, these are some really fun stickers or rub-ons. Nice, thank you. Okay, challenge item. So I see a little note. Valerie, I'm so excited to have you participating in the DIY mystery box challenge. I know you will do great. I think I went easy on you. Please don't hate me. Welcome to Texas, much love, Courtney. Hope you can make out an image on the M&Ms. That is so cute. It's Courtney and her husband. I like to banter back and forth with her husband on Instagram. He's hilarious. If you don't follow him, you should. All right, so this is mystery item number two. I'm gonna wait on our mystery items till the end. Okay, so first thing I'm finding are some foam balls. Love this. This is a great start. Thank you for taking it easy on me. Um, this one's wrapped up, so I'm thinking this might be a mystery item, so I'm going to set that aside. I think you, okay, overall I think you did take it easy on me, Courtney, so thank you. Being my first challenge, I was like so nervous. Alright, so we've got some yarn, beautiful colors, perfect for spring, yellow, pink, and green, and this that I love, basket from the Dollar Tree in gold, good shape too. All right, we've also got a really cute chalkboard on a little easel. I don't know if this is Dollar Tree, but I don't think I've seen these in my store. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open this because I see there's another wrapped item that's my mystery item. So let's see what this is. Oh, this is cute. Okay, so this is a 
little add your own message marker with a marker. So cute, it's in ceramic in white, love that. Next we've got little sign, very easy to work with, thank you. So it does have the tooth hanger, you can hang it. And, oh, this is cute too. Some wood embellishments. So these are wood flowers. And this is really cute too. Now I'm not gonna wanna destroy it or change it up. Really cute sign, Garden of Weeding. Cute. Next up, a camera. I have seen these in my Dollar Tree, so this is fun. Also a wood piece, nice shape to that. Also a little house, super cute, wood piece in gather. And then some plant labels, that's really cute, that's fun, especially for spring. And then the last thing that is not a mystery item, says it is wallpaper. So this is by Main Street. You went so easy on me, but I haven't opened the mystery item. So let's get into those. This is adorable. So let's go with mystery item number one. I might be clinching a little bit at this very moment in time. Okay. Pencils. So the mystery items can be a little more challenging to do DIYs and crafts and decor making with, but um, pencils I think I can work with. Thank you. And mystery item number two. I think I know what this is. I was wrong, but I think I can come up with something. So this is a steering wheel cover in a sort of a creamy off-white, so. All right, I'm gonna do some thinking about this, see what I can come up with, and make sure that I incorporate the different types of our twist items. Let's get right into it. So let's get started with our first DIY, and for that I am using the garden sign. I know it's adorable, along with the wallpaper that Courtney sent me. And my idea for this is to create a standing bunny shelf. Stay with me, people. It turned out adorable. This is an idea I picked up from the Target dollar spot, so you're going to want to make sure and see how this one turned out. I went ahead and covered that little sign, made it super neutral, grabbed some wire snips, I know, I know, this escalated a little quickly, but I needed to remove the center of that bunny wreath from the Dollar Tree. Then I went ahead and used the sign, which is now the top of the shelf, to go ahead and bend that wire frame to make it more of a shelf. Now it did bust, it's still usable, but you might wanna pick up two in case that happens to you. Now what I did is I disconnected the bunny frame from itself and at its ears. I grabbed some beads, so let's knock that right out of the park. So use of beads, check. I did pick these up from my Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off and they were only about 350 for a huge container of these white beads. I went ahead and stretched out the ear portion to just slide them on down. And then I clipped off a portion of this center you saw me remove to sort of join these. It needed a little stability since I detached it to get the beads on it. Now this worked out great, but I was fortunate enough to have a bead that kind of split apart in my container, which made disguising the fact that I joined it together that much more easy. So if you give this one a try, bead your frame all the way up and then allow for four beads between your ears and one bead in the center of the ears and that will hold with a little bit of hot glue and that extra centerpiece. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect our shelf portion and make this puppy able to stand up. And for this, I'm gonna check off the use of wood, which is one of my twist challenges. I actually picked up a few of these pieces from the Dollar Tree, so they're $1.25 each. I picked up two of them, and I'm gonna use them to go ahead and sandwich that wire frame in between the shelf, which was the sign, and the two pieces of wood with just a little bit of hot glue. Once my hot glue was all dried and set up, I went ahead and painted the base of it black, and then I used it to display some really cute little Easter decor trinkets. I think this is a great little addition to any decorating you have planned for the Easter holidays. But now it's time to move on to DIY number two, and for that we are using our challenge item number one, 
which was pencils. And for this, I also picked up two frames from the Dollar Tree that are four by four square. They were black, but they could be any color you wanted. And I started gluing some pencils in each corner. Then I realized I probably should glue a few more in each corner for some stability. So I went ahead and glued three. Now, note to you, do this in a different order than I did. If I were to do this one again, I would glue the pencils to each other in sets of three. I would paint them black before I did that. And then I would glue them between the two frames before spray painting them. Turned out fine, but I think it would just be a little bit easier in the painting process. Now, as you can see, we have created an almost glassless lantern. You're gonna wanna save one of the glass insets from one of your frames and cover it with some of the scrap wallpaper from our last DIY. You're also gonna wanna save a piece of that wire frame to dub as the handle of our lantern. I did go ahead and use some of the leftover beads, put it right on a piece of that frame, painted in black, and then I'm taking some of the styrofoam balls that Courtney sent me. I'm hot gluing them to the base of our lantern to be the feet. Now my experience with spray painting styrofoam is that it melts. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a first coat of some acrylic paint. Let that all dry completely before going outside and giving the entire piece a once over with some more black spray paint just to kind of buffer those foam balls from any melting. Don't want any collapsing feet on our lantern. And for this, I'm using a little ceramic bunny I had from Target Dollar Spot to display in the middle of it. I think this looks a little bit higher end than some Dollar Tree pencils. What about you? Comment below. Now on to tackling our challenge item number two, the steering wheel cover from the Dollar Tree. For this, I took out my handy dandy seam ripper. Now I knew exactly what I wanted to do once I got to thinking, but I will say this took a little while to go ahead and get it completely undone. I also threw it in the dryer to kind of flatten it out. And then I took out some cardboard to make a template for a banner. I also used my cardboard to make some bunny templates that I used to go ahead and trace out some bunnies on some scrap fabric I have on hand. I'm also gonna use some more of that scrap fabric and some hot glue on some cardboard. We're gonna turn these into little carrots for our banner. Now you don't necessarily need the cardboard. I just decided to add that layer for stability. And so I didn't really kind of melt all the fabric hot gluing it together. I also cut a few carrots out of cardboard to cover with some twine. All I did was hot glue the twine to the back of the cardboard and wound it around and around the carrot shape. Now we are gonna need some stems for our carrot, so I'm using some of that green yarn again. To do this, I wound the yarn around some cardboard. I had some strips of yarn down the center, went ahead and tied those, then cut off the extra, and then I went through the loops and cut those to fray them and make them into our little carrot stems. Now I'm taking my fabric covered carrots first. I'm gonna hot glue those straight onto the banner. And I decided to go ahead and have those going out to the sides and then put the twine covered carrot down the center with a little bit of hot glue. So I did this to two of the banner pieces. I cut out five and there was actually scrap left over. You probably could make about eight different banner pieces. I wanted one that was five. So I have two with the carrots like this and then I have three with the bunnies. So I flipped my fabric over, added the hot glue to the back, and then I used the banner and placed it on top so I didn't burn my fingers. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I did it wrong the first time and I did burn my fingers, so take it from me. I also used some more of the yarn, went ahead and braided a few pieces and made that the string or top for our banner. Now I'm just using hot glue to fold over the top edge and being more cautious using my scissors to adhere that hot glue. Once you have all your pieces put together on your banner, you can go ahead and embellish them. I did add little cottontails to my bunnies and now I have a super cute little banner to use for Easter. I love that it is neutral. I use black, white, and then the twine, a little hint of green, and I use some more of those beads to separate my banner pieces. Not necessary, but I thought it looked really cute. Now on to our next DIY. For this one, we're using the wire basket. I spray painted mine black, and then I took some of this nautical rope in the white, and I unwound it so that we had thinner pieces to work with. Now that is time consuming, so maybe do it while you're watching a show or something, but it does work much better and gives you more bang for your buck. So now you can go ahead and get started by weaving your yarn through your basket in any pattern you wish. Just try and keep it somewhat consistent. I did use a black zip tie to secure one end of my rope so that once I started weaving, it would stay in place. And I do recommend having some black zip ties if you choose to go with a black frame on your basket. It was great for securing it in different places. Now I'm using a red zip tie because my end was fraying. I snipped off the end of it and it did keep the pieces of the rope together so that I could more quickly weave through my basket form. Now I decided to start with the bottom and that made weaving around the sides a whole lot easier. 
You just use another zip tie whenever you get to the end of your piece of rope to secure it to the next piece and you can go ahead and wrap it around a piece of the wire frame keep it nice and secure go ahead and snip that off and continue weaving once my basket was covered i decided to start weaving the rope around the edge just to give it a more finished look and I did like having the end of the zip tie on to help me go ahead and rope through a tight space. It was almost like having a needle. Once my entire basket was covered, including the top edge, you could stop there. It was really cute, but I decided to add a little bit of something. So I used some painter's tape to go ahead and tape off a stripe and then some black acrylic paint and a paintbrush to just take your time and go in with fine detail to cover that rope for the stripe. And I'm so glad I did. I think it adds a really cute little detail to the basket. Now you could use this to display some Easter decor, maybe some carrots or eggs, or you can use it in your coffee bar, which is what I've decided to use it for. I love having my K-Cups ready to use for our guests. Now onto our next DIY. I'm using this little sign. I removed the love metal text by just heating it up with my blow dryer, pulling it right off. And then I'm using some beads I found at the Dollar Tree. I actually threaded them onto a toothpick to make it a little more user friendly to put them around the edge of this sign. I also like to use a skewer just to kind of place them, keep them in the right area for the glue. This does make putting beads on quick and easy. You may wanna have a toothpick on hand next time you use beads and give this one a try. Next up, we're gonna take our little garden signs and clip off the bottoms. Now you're gonna do that to eight of them. Add a hot glue strip down the side and then go ahead and glue them together. I also used some more skewers and toothpicks just to add a little bit of stability. You're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Now use some hot glue to glue them onto the bottom of your sign and you have the beginnings of a little riser. This is something I wanted to dupe that I had seen in Hobby Lobby. Then I took a couple different shades of brown and started dabbing on the paint between the beads. It is going to take a few coats. I did end up going back in with another coat, especially on the feet before I decided to go ahead and add some white washing. For this, I just used some white paint that I watered down and a paintbrush. I tend to get a little heavy handed when it comes to whitewashing. How about you? I really should have stopped here, but I didn't. I kept going. I still love my little riser, but I wish I would have had a lighter hand when it comes to the distressing and whitewash. Now you may have noticed what I have on my little pedestal or my little riser. So let's get into our next DIY. For this one, we're using the little house with the gather sign. Now I tried to get off that little circle with the gather on it. It was a little difficult. So I decided to remove the stickers and use the backside. I just painted it black with a quick coat on only the face and then green. Ding, ding, ding. Second time in the video we are using green and I'm using some green paint to paint out the edge on that house. So I've now completed all of my twist challenges. Now for the rest of the house, I decided to go with something Eastery and I decided to do some crosses. I actually was gonna do an X pattern for like a hearth and hand takeoff, little target dupe, but I decided with Easter, I'd go ahead and paint on some white crosses. Once those were dry, I used some more of that green yarn and made a little tassel using one of the little cross embellishments from the Dollar Tree and some beads and some more of that green yarn that Courtney sent me. Now, speaking of green yarn, we're on to our next DIY. And for that, I'm using two different green yarns from the Dollar Tree and some of their foam eggs that I just picked up. These are really not a super complicated DIY. I had a few conversations with my teenagers while I wound the yarn around my eggs and just added them to my little riser and house. Now on to a few more DIYs for this. I'm also using my Cricut to cut out some custom labels for my little decor pieces. So I painted this little ceramic place marker that Courtney sent me in black, actually ran out. So one side is matte and one side is gloss, but no one will ever know. I decided to go ahead and put self-serve on one side and tea on the other. When we have guests in town that drink tea, I will pull more tea items out and set the little place marker on tea. On to our next DIY. For this one, we're using the wood cut out. And I had an idea for this. This is a sign I have wanted for my coffee bar. And I decided that this little chalkboard would be too small. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this wooden piece that I've painted black onto it to make it a little bit larger, a little more substantial. I just used a little bit of hot glue to adhere them together. And then I cut this out on my Cricut using a template I found online, running on coffee and Jesus. And these days, Lord knows I need them both. Onto our last DIY and I saved the best for last. 
and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with this little camera that Courtney sent me. I went ahead and used some painter's tape. That is also from the Dollar Tree, a great crafter's find. To tape off the wood portions of my camera, I love the wood portions. Not a huge fan for this craft of the blue and white chevron. So surprise, another one of my DIYs, I painted black. Get used to that here. I am a big fan of black paint. And then I went in with a fine brush for the details. I also used my Cricut to cut this out which says she said yes. And you can see why this is the best of my DIYs. Our son is engaged to be married and I popped in a photo from their engagement and put it in our guest room for our guests to enjoy. And it just so happens that they are the next guests on the list. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of the treasures that I have made for my home. Pieces of decor for both Easter and my coffee bar. I am in love with a few of these pieces. I think my favorite has got to be the basket. I would love to know what your favorite is and what you thought of how I use the mystery challenge items, comment down below and let me know. And don't forget to subscribe for more decor DIYs. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I got in my mystery box and what I came up with. I hope you're able to hop on over to Courtney's channel and everyone else who's participating, see what they got and what they created. Thank you to Courtney for inviting me to be a part. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you back very soon.